On September 6, 1971, a passenger plane departing out of Hamburg, Germany suffered a dual engine failure after takeoff. There were 121 passengers and crew on board. With little options on where to land the plane in such a scenario, and being unable to turn back to the airport, the flight crew attempt to land the plane on a German autobahn. Unfortunately, in this case, the pilot's hands were forced due to obstructions ahead and it was also the middle of rush hour. The plane made a crash landing resulting in the deaths of 22 people. The crash landing of Pan International Airlines Flight 112 is an aviation incident which has very little written about it. While there was media coverage when it occurred in 1971, there has not been a whole lot since. An accident report was unavailable at the time of research of this video. Using what records are available, we can construct a timeline of events which led up to this disaster, and the root cause which lies in a rather unbelievable mistake. It was the afternoon on Monday, September 6, 1971, and preparations were underway for the departure of Pan International Airlines Flight 112 to Malaga, Spain. The now long defunct West German airline Pan International at the time was only in its second year of operation. Headquartered out of Munich, Pan International operated out of several German airports to holiday destinations all across Europe. They had even acquired two former American Airlines Boeing 707s to add and diversify their fleet. Otherwise, the rest of Pan International's fleet consisted of four British-built BAC 111s. The British Aerospace Corporation 111 was very much a product of its time. Introduced in 1965, the plane was a short-range, narrow-body jetliner, one of many brand-new jet planes of the time. The 111 involved in the Flight 112 incident was only around one and a half years old. Flight 112 itself that afternoon had originated out of the city of Hanover and as planned was making a stopover in the city of Hamburg in northern West Germany. Once arriving in Hamburg, the plane will pick up more passengers for the flight to Malaga. Located in the cargo hold on the inbound leg to Hamburg were five water canisters. These were offloaded and used to fill a water tank near the two rear-mounted engines. A quirk of planes of the time is that to provide increased performance on the engines, a mixture of water and methanol can be injected into the engines. This would make the air cooler and denser before combustion. This is what should have happened. However, two of the five water canisters located in the cargo hold did not contain water. The previous day, this Pan International plane flew into Dusseldorf where it stayed overnight. The canisters had been misplaced by ground staff at the airport, to which two of the canisters were filled with kerosene jet fuel before being loaded onto the plane that night. The water canisters containing kerosene were left in the plane's cargo hold overnight and remained there until the plane arrived in Hamburg in the late afternoon the following day. When the water tank was due to be filled in Hamburg, kerosene jet fuel would be loaded instead of water which was supposed to cool the engines. Located on the flight deck were the two members of the flight crew, consisting of Captain Reinhold Hulz, age 35, and First Officer Elizabeth Frisk, age 32. They were accompanied by the four flight attendants and would be taking a total of 115 passengers on their flight out of Hamburg. It was nearly a full flight. It was now after 6 p.m. as Pan International Flight 112 began preparations for departure. All passengers and cargo had now been loaded and the plane's water tank was inadvertently filled with jet fuel. Taxi clearance was given and the 111 taxied out to what was at the time numbered as runway 34. At 18 minutes past six in the evening, Pan International Flight 112 was given takeoff clearance from air traffic control and the plane's two engines were powered up by the captain. As the speed of the aircraft increases on takeoff, Pilots are constantly monitoring the aircraft systems. Passing V1 speed, on this occasion it was observed that the engine temperatures were showing higher readings than normal. It was warm that day and the reading was not excessively high, so the takeoff continued as normal. 
Runway 34 at Hamburg Airport is a north-northwesterly departure. Several hundred meters beyond the end of the runway is the busy German A7 Autobahn, part of the European Route 45, which runs from southern Italy to the most northerly parts of Norway. In just a few moments, this motorway will become the scene of a plane crash. As Flight 112 leaves the ground at Hamburg and begins to climb, so too do the engine temperatures keep rising. The flight crew are unaware that at the rear of the plane, excessive amounts of jet fuel are being injected into the plane's engines. The purpose of the water tank was to cool the engines, whereas on this occasion, it is functioning in the exact opposite and temperatures continue to rise. Just seconds after leaving the ground while only 300 meters in the air, the left side engine fails due to overheating, quickly followed by the right side engine almost immediately. With no engine power, the plane cannot keep climbing for much longer. Captain Reinhold Hultz acts by dropping the nose to maintain speed on the aircraft. Keeping up the plane's speed will allow the pilots to have more control of the plane in the event of a forced landing. However, there are not that many options available for putting the plane down here. The flight crew try to relight the engines with no result. Even then, it would take time for the engines to spool up, time which the flight crew do not really have at this moment. Having just left the airport, thus flying away from it, and while being at such a low altitude, it would be dangerous to try and turn the plane back to the airport with an over 180 degree turn. Instead, the captain needed to find somewhere ahead of them to put the plane down. The pilots choose the A7 Autobahn ahead of them. With not a lot of time, the landing gear was lowered, and so began the process of getting the plane on the ground. There was, however, a problem. This stretch of the Autobahn has several overpasses crossing above it. If Captain Hulz decides to put the plane down here, he could face potentially crashing the plane into an overpass. It is not helped by the fact that either side of the road are trees and forests. Judging this as their best option, the flight crew descend the plane down towards the Autobahn. It would also be the case that the hands of the flight crew would be forced in needing to put the plane down sooner than planned, as further ahead of the plane on the glide path were electrical lines and pylons. They only had a short window of time to act. They would be unable to avoid an overpass just ahead of them as the plane entered a high sink rate. The plane had just left Hamburg only seconds ago when it makes a hard landing on, from the captain's perspective, the left southbound side of the A7 Autobahn. The left side main undercarriage landing gear immediately collapsed once the plane touched down on the road. The pilots attempt to apply the brakes as hard as possible. However, moments later, the 111 collides with the concrete pillars of a nearby overpass ahead of the plane. The nose section consisting of the flight deck and the first few rows of passenger seating is torn away from the plane. The wings were also sheared off, which resulted in an outpouring of jet fuel, where the remains of the plane erupted into flames. The rest of the plane skidded off of the autobahn where it came to a rest after leaving a long trail of wreckage. 99 people on board the plane survived the crash, including the two pilots. 22 of the 121 occupants perished in the disaster. The investigation concluded that the dual engine failure on the plane was due to two of the five water canisters which were previously loaded into the cargo hold the day before contained jet fuel and not water, which was the contents to be expected. Excessive damage inflicted on the engine from this extra fuel caused severe overheating eventually causing the engines to fail almost instantaneously. The aftermath of the disaster would spell the end for Pan International Airlines. Shortly after the incident, the airline ceased operations due to continued negative publicity. Both members of the flight crew involved in Pan International Flight 112 continued to fly. While it is very rare for any pilot to be faced with a potentially fatal accident in their careers, it is even more unprecedented for it to happen twice. Such was the case with First Officer Elizabeth Frisk. After the incident, she would eventually find herself flying charter services on board a Cessna Citation aircraft. 16 years later, on the 31st of May 1987, First Officer Elizabeth Frisk would be involved in another fatal accident where her plane made a crash landing at Lübeck Airport. This accident would take the lives of three people, including the former first officer of Pan International 112, Elizabeth Frisk.
Hello everyone, and good evening. Thank you all for making it to the end of another video. I know this has been a shorter video than normal, but regardless, if you did find it interesting, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, as there are new videos every Saturday. As is routine, it is time to thank my patrons for their continued support over these past months, and we do have several new names on the Patreon this week. If you would like to get your name featured or read out at the end of the next video, you can join the Patreon from £3 per month, and the link to that will be in the pinned comment below. A thank you to my £5 patrons, Aidan Montgomery, Hector Palmatellas, Ian Tatum, Jacopo, KTP123, Ken Zachman, Christy, Leon St. Jennings, a new joiner, Marie Innes, MG, who is also new to the Patreon, Pacman7, Panic Chicken, Surya Melody, also a new Patreon subscriber, and so FP. Thank you all so much. And special thanks to my very generous £10 patrons for their continued support. Cade, Daniel Hendricks, D. Rogers, Mike Milton, Side Effect, Robert Hamilton, Roger Mayer, Where Are My Cheetos, the latest £10 patron with a great name, and Will Tanner. Thank you all so much. Your support has been spectacular. I really can't thank you enough. Thank you. And that is it for me today. Have a good weekend, and I will see you next week. Goodbye.